Hi everyone, uh, Mr. Jeff here at the Washington County Free Library, and uh, I thought that for today's story time, it's getting to be summer and uh, the weather is turning nice and warm and a lot of people are going on, on vacation. And some people go into the mountains to stay cool, but I know that my family likes going to the beach, and I kind of like going to the beach too. So I thought we would talk a little bit about the beach. I brought some things along to share with you. I, first of all, I have to have my beach hat. Here's my beach hat. That keeps the sun off my head. What else do you need at the beach? Well, of course, well, you need a towel, right? A beach towel to lay on or lie on. So I got my beach towel. What else do we use at the beach? Let's see. Oh, you can't go without sunblock. You got to have that sunblock, that suntan lotion to make sure that your skin stays healthy while you're lying out in the hot sun. You want to get a tan. You don't want to get burned, so you have to take plenty of sunblock with you. And also, sometimes I like to lie on the beach and listen to my little portable radio. I do that sometimes. And if we're playing at the beach, we might want to take a ball with us. And what do you use to dig in the sand? That's right. You would use a shovel and maybe bring in a bucket along like this. Maybe a sand bucket. And what do we find at the beach? We walk along the shore. I know what I do. I look for shells. Here's a shell that I found not too long ago on one of the beaches I went to. That's like a scallop or something. And there's another interesting looking shell there. Yeah, the shells I find, sea creatures are no longer living in. They're just shells along the beach that they used to live in. Even something unusual like this, I'm not sure what that is, if it's coral or what. Yeah. An interesting thing. So we have a lot of fun at the beach, going out and going swimming and walking along the shore and lying on our towels and listening to the radio and reading. And of course, you have to bring your beach umbrella, too. I didn't bring my beach umbrella along today, but I did bring some books to share with you. So let me take my beach hat off, since I'm not at the beach right now. And I want to share a book with you. It's called At the Beach. It's by Ann Rockwell, illustrated by Harlan Rockwell, and brought to us by Aladdin of New York. At the Beach. Oh, look, there's a little girl and her mom. I wear my bathing suit, and I bring my shovel and pail when I go to the beach. Look, Mom's got the tote bags and has the umbrella. We bring our towels and a beach umbrella and a tote bag with us. Got to keep that sun off a little bit and the sand out. In the tote bag... There are two cups and a thermos of lemonade. Ooh, that sounds good. We have two sandwiches wrapped in aluminum foil and two peaches for lunch. That's right, when you go to the beach, sometimes you have to take your own lunch. There's a tube of sunscreen to rub on our skin so we don't get sunburned. She says, look, there's mommy rubbing the sunscreen on her back. She said, I like the way the sunscreen smells. I like that, too. Little sandpipers run down the beach, and I follow them. Have you ever seen those little birds that run along the beach, and they look for little mussels in the sand to have for lunch or breakfast? You see them often right along where the waves are, running up and down the beach. Little sandpipers. My feet make footprints in the wet sand. And look, the sandpipers, they make footprints, too. So there she is. She's making her footprints. And there the sandpipers are. And they're making their footprints. Oh, I find some seaweed. That's right. Sometimes we do find seaweed along the, the shore. And seashells on the beach. Yeah, a lot like the ones that I found. There's one, two, three, four, five seashells. I build a castle with my shovel and pail, and the boy next to me digs a channel where his boat can float. 
Everyone is building something in the sand of the beach. It looks like they're covering Grandpa in sand at the beach. All kinds of things going on. She's using that little bucket, just like I have my little bucket here, to fill full of sand and make sand castles. I wade in the water, and a little crab tweaks my toe, and a little silver fish swims past me. Look, there's the crab tweaking her on the toe. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of. I like to walk past the lifeguard station to the big brown rocks. That's where the barnacles and snails and the mussels live. It's like there's a lot of folks at the beach that day. When my mother and I go swimming, the waves crash on us and get us all wet and a big seagull swims close to us. When we go to the beach, sometimes the seagulls swoop down and they'd like to eat our lunch. <laughs> then I lie on my towel and dry myself in the hot sun. Make sure I, that she has plenty of that sunblock on until it's time, like mommy's unpacking the tote bag. What did we say was in the tote bag? It's time for lunch. So there she is. She's got her lemonade and her peach and her sandwich. And she's sitting on the beach on her towel having a great time. There's her little bucket behind her and some of the seashells and things that she's collected. And if you look closely, you can see that seagull up in the upper corner there. He's looking. He's saying, hmm, maybe I'd like to have a piece of that sandwich too. And that's the end of that story. That's about what happens at the beach by Ann Rockwell. I like that book. I want to share a flannel board with you. I'm going to pull that over so you can see. Pull my flannel board over here. This is a counting flannel board. You know what these are? These are sand castles, just like that little girl was building in the sand. That's, these are like what you would build at the seashore. Looks like we've used sandpaper to make the castles. And can you hold up five fingers like this? Five little sand castles built by the shore. Along came a wave and whoosh! Up, oh, there it goes. <laughs> Washed it away. And then there were four. Four little sand castles built by you and me. Along came a wave and whoosh! Up, oh, there it goes. The wave washed it away, and then there were three. Three little sand castles built by me and you. Along came a wave, and whoosh! Up, oh, there were two. Two little sand castles built in the sun. Along came a wave, and whoosh! Washed it away. And then there was one. There's only one left. One little sand castle built just for fun. Along came a wave and whoosh. Up. Oh, there were none. That's the way it is with sand castles. We build them at the seashore, but when the tide comes in, usually it washes our sand castles away. They are never meant to be permanent things. They are things that we build for fun when we're at the beach, but they don't last too long, but that's okay. Well, I have one more story that I want to share with you, and this is a story about a little crab. It's a hermit crab. Now, hermit crabs, they don't have their own shells. What they do is that they take empty shells to live in, and they grow, and as they grow, they have to change shells. They have to find bigger shells to live in the older they get, and this is the story of a little hermit crab who had outgrown his shell, and he was looking for another one. So let's see if he finds it. Now, can you take your fingers like this? Because he's going to go across the ocean floor, go scritch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Let's see if we can share this story. This is by Megan McDonald, illustrated by S.D. Schindler, and brought to us by Richard Jackson. It's a Richard Jackson book. Is this a house for hermit crab? 
hermit crab finds all kinds of things to try to live in. Let's see if he finds a, a real home for himself. Oh, look. Here's hermit crab. Hermit crab was forever growing too big for the house on his back. He was always having to change houses. It was time to find a new house. So he crawled up out of the water looking for something to hide in, where he would be safe from the prickle pine fish, as the prickle pine fish would like to eat him for lunch. He stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. He went like this, ready? Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a rock. Let's put that rock. Is this a house for hermit crab? Do you think he could live under that rock? Let's see. Turning himself around and around, hermit crab backed his hind legs beneath the rock, but the rock just wouldn't budge. It was just too heavy. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. He went, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came, what's that? He came to an old tin can. It was a rusty old tin can. Was this a house for hermit crab? Could he live in that tin can? When he tried to walk with the can on his back, it bumped and clunked. It was just too noisy. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. How did he go? He went scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a piece of driftwood. Is this a house for hermit crab? Can he live in that driftwood? Looks like maybe. Hermit crab crawled deep inside the rounded hollow at one end. No, it was just too dark for him. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. He went scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Until he came to a small plastic pail, a bucket. Can he live in that bucket? Can he live in that small plastic pail? Is this a house for hermit crab? Climbing up toward the rim, oops, he fell right He fell right in. He fell into the pail. He clawed and he clawed until he climbed back out. It was just too deep for him to live in. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. He went scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, until he came to a nice round hole in the sand. Is this a house for hermit crab? He poked his head down into the hole. A huge pair of eyes blinked back at him. Hermit crab shivered as he scurried away from the great big fiddler crab that was already living in that hole. He was peering out of its burrow. It was too crowded. He couldn't live in there with that great big fiddler crab. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. He went scritch scratch, scritch scratch, scritch scratch. Until he came up to a fishing net. Is this a house for hermit crab? I don't think so. I don't think I could live in a fishing net. Let's see. Poking his claws into the heap, he got tangled and caught. Hermit crab wriggled and wriggled until he found his way out of the net. There were just too many holes. He couldn't live in that fishing net. So he stepped along the shore by the sea in the sand. He went scritch scratch, scritch scratch, scritch scratch. Up oh, all of a sudden, a gigantic wave tossed and tumbled pebbles and sand over hermit crab's head. He swirled and he whirled with the tide and he was washed back out to the back out to sea. He was washed back into the ocean. That's what happens when the tide comes in. You can get washed back out. And look, it washed him back out in front, uh-oh, in front of that prickle pine fish. Now what did we say that prickle pine fish would like to do? That's right, he would like to eat hermit crab for his lunch. Sleeker than a shark, the prickle pine fish darted out from his hiding place in the tall seaweed. Every spine on his back stood straight as a steeple. His mouth was open wide. He headed right for hermit crab, and hermit crab raced across the ocean floor. He went like this, scratch, 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 very quickly. He scurried behind the first creature he saw. It was a sea snail. And he hoped that that sea snail would hide him. But guess what? The shell was empty. The shell was empty. So guess what Hermit Crab did? Hermit Crab scrambled inside as quick as a flash and clamped his paw over the opening in the shell. 
So that shell was big enough for him to climb inside and hide from the prickle pine fish. Well, look. There's the prickle pine fish. You can see how big he is compared to hermit crab. The prickle pine fish circled the snail shell three times, once, twice, three times, but he could not catch sight of the crab he had been chasing. He glided off in search of something else to eat for lunch. So prickle pine fish was disappointed he did not catch that hermit crab. When all seemed still and quiet, Hermit crab snuggled comfortably down into his new shell. It wasn't too heavy. Like what? What was too heavy? That's right. It was the rock. It wasn't heavy like the rock. And it wasn't too noisy. What was too noisy? That's right, the tin can. That's right. And it wasn't too dark. What was too dark? Remember? That was the piece of driftwood. And it wasn't too deep. What was too deep? That's right, it was the bucket, it was the pail that was too deep. And it wasn't too crowded, like the home of the fiddler crab. And it didn't have too many holes, like what? Like the fishing net. That's right. At last, Hermit Crab had found a new home, and look, it fit just right. So it was perfect for him. So at least for a while, Hermit Crab will have a happy home, but he might get bigger and someday he might have to find a little larger shell. But for this book, Hermit Crab has a happy ending. He found a home just for him. And that's the end of that story. That's the end of that story. Well, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed reading a couple of beach books with me. I've enjoyed uh, being here with you today. I've enjoyed doing the flannel board story, the five sand castles and enjoyed reading at the beach and, and is this a house for hermit crab and taking a look at some of the things that that uh, we go to the beach with like our sunblock and our beach towels and our buckets and finding seashells and maybe listening to the radio and maybe you know keeping hydrated with some with some water or some lemonade and to be safe there at the beach so i hope that uh, you get to go someplace soon, uh, whether you go to the mountains or whether you go to the beach, whatever. Always remember that the public library is here for you. You can come and check out some of our books, and you can take them with you to the beach. You can read on, on the towel, on the beach towel. Uh, read a book, or when you go into the mountains, you can read a book. Or if you don't go anywhere at all, you can stay at home and find a comfortable chair and sit and read in the cool of your ho own home. So I hope that you come down and visit the library. Thank you for letting me read to you, and I will be glad to see you next week for another story time. So bye-bye.